good to see where you can find a bit of a common thread. Yeah, absolutely. So all our programs so far are skilled migration programs. So in every case, the employer has to sponsor the employee like they would someone coming from Australia or Mexico or Japan. So the idea is that it is just the standard um, skilled migration programs. Um, so there is that requirement there. And often, you know, if if, if employers have, don't hire internationally, it's, it's a very steep learning curve for them. Um, but in, in cases where they haven't done it before, they often are really motivated by the human impact or the humanitarian outcome of this program. Otherwise, it's just such a natural thing for them to say, yeah, we found the right person, we'll get them here and sponsor their visa. I think there are two real sets of challenges. The first is administrative, and that's what we really work with governments around. Migration programs are, are structured to, to expect things that are present in, in, the, in the society, right? So a passport, um, uh, police checks, um, academic transcripts and things like that. But if you can imagine someone um, being in displacement for 10 or 12 years, fearing persecution of the country in which they were born and have citizenship, to present to that authority and say, I need a travel document because I'm going here is a really scary thought. The other thing that makes it really challenging is that in um, displacement in Lebanon, for example, they physically run out of passport booklets. Mm. Like they, they do not have passport booklets. And so how do we, um, what we work with governments is to say, how do we not reduce the criteria? How are you satisfied of someone's identity, security, and also their ability to move? without a document that we know as a passport is, is the document that everyone sort of turns to. So one example is that in um, Canada, for example, the policy allows um, candidates to present with an expired passport because that demonstrates their um, identity. And then the Canadian government or, or another government will issue or, or, or an international NGO a non-government organisation will issue an actual travel document to get the candidate the ability to travel. Um, in other cases, in Australia, there is the facility to get bi biometrics testing for Australia to issue an identity and a travel document as they do for other humanitarian applicants. So which really trying to the challenge is really trying to weave in how to meet criteria but in a flexible arrangement that accounts for displacement that sits within the skilled um, uh, context but takes into account the displacement circumstances. So that's a big part of what we do and, and, and that's a lot of work that we do with government organisations, bureaucratic organisations and take a lot of advice from advisors on where it's been done before, how we can navigate it um, to, to create pilots. The other side that's, that's quite difficult is... Um, is that employers don't know or don't know that this talent pool exists. They're unseen and, and like, inaccessible. So a lot of our work is, is showing that there are skilled people in displacement and people who can actually um, fill skill shortages. Um, and then it's a matter of changing or adapting to um, uh, global mobility processes that take into account the fact that candidates often come with very little or no capital. So, you know, they may, we had one candidate who's come as a software engineer and a salary of £70,000, but will come with very little. So to actually get a deposit to have a flat, to, you know, put their kids in school and, and to buy groceries for the first three months is incredibly difficult. So what can employers do to support that? Um, knowing that the candidate does have the money in turn to be able to support themselves. So they're the sort of, um, I guess, administrative challenges that come with bringing a displaced person into, into the realm of skilled migration. Oh, absolutely. There's so many um, nuances to the process, I, I, I guess. But it shows that if there's a will, there's a way. Um, and the willingness, but yeah, the practical aspects of moving to a country, we know like, right, just renting a house in most places is a challenge, no matter, and if you have no history, so 
uh, yeah, I can imagine that there'll be a number of things that will come up, but it's, again, very good to have um, TBB helping to kind of overcome these this challenges to settle in a new life. I also I found it fascinating that you also need to go on the governmental level and inspire policies of new to issue new ways to represent a person and identity of a person in many different ways that will fit different countries as well um, and all part of this work it's really a so how I was saying that because it's not a shop but you know you got everything into one uh, model and uh, wow a lot of work Yes, <laughs> a lot of work, but also a lot of enthusiasm and willingness, because I think when you think about it, it's quite a logical idea, but we're working in a system that hasn't considered that skilled people are also displaced people in some cases. And so it's about navigating and applying flexibilities. But, you know, everywhere we work, there's there's an enthusiasm and an energy and you know, um, again, for, for our colleagues at, at the Home Office in the UK, for example, you know, who process visas as a matter of course, in this, you, you start to personalise it and humanise it. And you're absolutely right in that, you know, a real driver for us is to change the conversation and the rhetoric of what it is to be a refugee or a displaced person, um, because that, in many cases, is a circumstance. It's not an identity. So, um yeah, it, it, it's it's an incredibly powerful tool to um, change conversation. I'm very mindful of your time, Marina. So I want to know all about Portugal. Yeah. Tell us so, when, when it's happening, how it's happening. What can well, we yeah, do to help? Really. How, how do we get involved? How do we get involved? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very excited that we are um, launching uh, the program. So our partners in um, Portugal are IOM. So, who, who are the UN um, a Migration Agency, so the International Organization for Migration, um, as well as ACM, the High Commission for Migration. So uh, together, the three of us sort of are working together on, on um, the, the approach in terms of a visa and working with government on that. But of course, there's no labor mobility without employers. Um, and so uh, we have an event on the 2nd of uh, November. Very happy to share details about that for any employers who would like to attend and to learn more. Um, but then in early 2023, we're going to be coming to provide information um, and ask employers to pioneer this with us in, in Portugal. So the best way to get in touch is if you go onto the talentbeyondboundaries.org website. Um, there are expressions of interest for partners, for um, employers who'd like to get involved. Um, and once we get those um, expressions of interest, uh, Paulina and, and the team and uh, will get in touch to provide both details of the event, but then an overview of, of how best to get involved depending on, on the organisation. Paulina, how are you? <laughs> Good. I wasn't sure if I was in the background or actually on screen. For all yes, <laughs> yes, you are with us. And uh, since we've recorded about 40 minutes of your image there, I think we will give you a voice as well. Um, Paulina, you, you look after PR, so you work with Marina. Where are you from? I'm originally from Mexico, um, from northern Mexico, um, a state called Chihuahua. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a dog, <laughs> yes. It's a good icebreaker when you throw that into a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how long have you been working with Talent Beyond Boundaries? Um, so I'm fairly new. Uh, it's been a bit over a month now. Okay. It has flown by, but yeah, about five weeks, I think, now. Excellent. But there are lots of uh, exciting projects now you've been working on. Um, I guess Portugal is also under your wing uh, on the PR side of things. And um, how do you find uh, doing uh, PR working with the, the subject of, um, of um, talent uh, and migration? Do you find it hard? It's very exciting, really, and uh, very dynamic, as you can tell. There's a lot going on all the time. Um, for example, now we're doing the Europe programs, but as well in the UK, there's lots going on. Um, we try to keep 
a community with the alumni. Uh, that's how we call um, the candidates that have established themselves in the UK and have already a, a, a job. So we are now um, working with them on having growing the community and strengthening the connections between them. We're working on having a few events across the UK for different cities to to kind of connect them and hear about them. Um, we have events with our partners. So it, it's a very challenging um, environment to work on, but as well, very rewarding. Excellent. Yeah. And the, the PR person is pretty much a storyteller. And I guess you must get a lot of prize because there's a lot of uh, interesting stories to tell. And um, so best of luck for you in your, in your position. And uh, we hope to see you and Marina soon in Portugal, but we haven't finished yet. I still have one question. It's a very important one. Um, Marina, how can we do our part? Um, and both ways, you know, how can skilled migrants uh, sign in and, um, and how can companies get involved as well? Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, a lot of it is going to be on our website. So, um, for candidates who are forcibly displaced, um, we do have a focus of um, geography in, in Lebanon and Jordan. However, we're expanding with partners into Asia, so Malaysia, Indonesia, India, um, into Peru, uh, Colombia, and Mexico, um, and then we have partners in, in Kenya and Uganda as well. So candidates, we're, we're trying to get global coverage to make sure that we represent displaced people all over the world. So that is a matter of registering on the talent catalogue, and that's a process like, I guess, registering for LinkedIn, where you're asked a series of questions about your skills, experience, qualifications, language ability, etc. cetera, um, to, to be registered on the talent catalogue so that when opportunities come up, we, we can match the right people. In terms of employers, um, we would love for displaced talent to be considered in workforce planning. So it's not just a matter of a, a one-off thing to do. Um, we'd love employers to consider uh, displaced talent in, in um, placements, you know, as part of their ordinary international recruitment. So uh, the best way for companies to come forward is just to put an expression of interest on our website. That's talentbeyondboundaries.org. Um, this can't be done without employers. Employers are the, the main cog in the wheel and, um, you know, without jobs there is no labour mobility. There isn't the opportunity to leverage skills and secure futures. So um, we really are calling on employers um, to pioneer this with us. It's, it's exciting but it's unknown and there's lots of surprises but it, it is a tremendous opportunity. And in Portugal in particular there is a very strong um, what's called a complementary pathway for education where um, refugees will come in to study and then remain in Portugal and to practice their their um, skills and their experience that they've learned in Portugal. We're now wanting to introduce labour mobility as a complementary pathway. So we have the commitment um, from um, all the relevant stakeholders. We just need employers to prove that it can happen and that it is worth staying around in, in Portugal and then the rest of Europe. So very exciting times. Super exciting times. And you make the impossible happen. So uh, companies, please get involved because it's a fantastic project. Um, Patricia, do you have a question? No, no, I'm just Marino? very appreciative of your time. And I also make a commitment that we will sign up. Uh, we actually are hiring at the moment for a lot of different positions. Very excited. We also... Uh, probably here different circumstances, but all in a, one way or another, uh, also migrants. So um, global citizens, so definitely on board in all sorts of ways. So thank you again, uh, Marina, Paulina, for, for, for being here. So thank you all, Marina and Paulina and Patricia. Um, it was a great pleasure to have you in our studios and to have you share your life experience and the fantastic work of Talent Beyond Boundaries. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Last but not least, please hit like and subscribe to our channel so we can have more special treats coming your way. See you next time.